Hello everybody and welcome back to VFR Today. We are taking another trip in the DC-6 and this time I think it's a pretty classic one that we would associate with the DC-6. We are here on the ground early in the morning here in Nome, Alaska. And we're going to be driving this DC-6 back to Anchorage where it has a full day of work ahead of it flying crisscross in Alaska. We're here in the Northern Air Cargo livery today. And we're pretty lightly loaded because again we're kind of returning back to Anchorage but we're going to take a little bit more fuel than we have before. And uh, it should be a good, fun flight. We've got a little bit of weather in the area, some wind and a nice cloud layer. And um, yeah, so we'll brief the rest of the flight when we hop into the flight deck. And um, we'll get everything fired up. Alright, welcome to the flight deck. And this is the first time I'm really getting to try out some of the new lights. That's one of the new things I'm going to be um, starting up. Once we, uh, you got to get the plane on first. Let's make sure we've got a ground power unit. We do. And battery. On. And let's have our friends run the before start checklist. Let's let them get to work. There's our lights. He's got it. Checked. Northern matches. Okay, so while they're running this, let's talk through our route. We are leaving here at Nome, Alaska, and it's about a two-hour flight um, over to Anchorage. We're going to be following three VORs, um, four if you count the one we're going to be following outbound, and I'm going to start programming that in now. It's not going to be K, okay. we're in Alaska. P. Before start checks complete. Start engines. Alright, so they're all ready for us, but we got a little bit of work to do. P A. And this is the real fun part. P A O M is GNOME. Uh, so I am going to be flying with the more modern rate, uh, the more um, modern suite today, um, just to kind of get more of a modern Alaskan DC-6 experience, uh, because they do still fly DC-6s for a little bit longer out in Alaska. I don't believe Northern Air Cargo still does. So we're going to use the GPS, and we're going to try and see how that works compared with the old school stuff. Still going to be tracking VORs, um, but. Yeah, it should be just about a straight shot across Alaska. Um, we're going to be heading at about a heading of 095096 pretty much the whole way. Um, and these VO and the other challenge that's going to be happening with these um, is these VORs are going to be somewhat spread out. There's probably 150 miles between each of them. So there is a chance we may have to do some dead reckoning. MCG. VOR is the one. And then we're going to Bravo Golf, Quebec. And that'll take us down into Anchorage. Now the winds today are about 240 at 11. They're going to be the same here in Nome and in Anchorage. So we're going to be trying to... Well, we'll take a look at the chart and see what runway we're going to take off on here. Um, and no, we're going to have to do some, we're going to have to do some backtracking here. There aren't a lot of taxiways out to these runways. B C Q B G Q, and then we're going to get into Pank. Uh, so other goals for the flight. We're still I'm still kind of roughing in the after start to before takeoff checklist. And um, there's a couple things I was watching 
um, some other videos about it that I think are good to include. Um, including where we take the, the gust lock off, we might change that. That's going to be about 479 miles, and that's about right. Okay, so we've got that all programmed in. Um, I'm just going to go ahead now, for my own sake, and tune in the VORs we're going to need. So the first VOR is going to be uh, the GNOME VOR on 115.0. We're going to track this one outbound, um, just so we can kind of get a sense of where we're going. So 11, what did I say, 115.0? 115.0. That's going to be gnome, and then we're going to basically we're going to basically run that for as long as we can, or until we can pick up the and I'm going to butcher this. The Unalakit, Unalakit. I don't know. Uniform November Kilo, 116.9. That's going to be basically us going feet dry, and then we're going to be over the center of Alaska, going to McGar uh, to yeah McGarth. And then to, I believe, Bears Lake, north of Anchorage. All right, so those are tuned in. And we'll tune in the secondary radios on the way. But right now, we're ready for the start engines. I believe that um, the FE told us we were. So I'm just going to check our load one more time. And we'll go ahead and get this thing fired. So we're going to come up here to the top and run through our flow. We've got Magnetos 3 to both. Boost pump three is on low, engine selector is on three. We'll go ahead and start. Come down, make sure we have fuel pressure, we do. Six, nine, 12. Boost prime, and let's give it some mixture. And do we have life? We do. Yeah, it's not crazy cold here or anything today. This is kind of a, a summer day in Alaska. I'm getting a little rise here, so let's just make sure my throttles are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. On to engine four. Boost pumps to low, selector to four, start engine. Checking, making sure. Six. Nine. And Twelve. boost prime. Give it some mixture. And we got life. All right, that's half the engines fired. I do enjoy the rhythm of this. Um, I don't know why, but there is something satisfying about it. Magnetos to both. Fuel booster pump to low. Selectors to two. And we're good to go. Just making sure. Three, yep. Six. Nine. Twelve. Boost prime engine two. Welcome to life. And back up. We're going to go both. Low. One. Give it a second. Check out the window. Starting engine one. Boost prime. Auto rich. And we have life. All right, so everything seems to be stabilizing. We're going to wait for that oil temperature to come up a bit. But so far, so good. I think we go over to the red lighting, just because. Why not? That looks awesome. I don't know why. That's awesome. Okay. And now, time to get the checklist up. We've got oil pressure, we've got fuel pressure. Everything's looking good. So let's go ahead and configure after start checklist. Boost pumps coming off. And then start selector. Off. Battery. We're going over to plain battery. GPU. 
removed. Inverters checked. Generators checked and on. Emergency lights, we've got them armed. And let's ride through the before, ta before taxi. Um, our lights look like they're set up. We've got our beacon on. Um, we'll turn some of the other lights on. I what does that do? Hmm. So that's just illuminating the wing. Okay, cool. Vision lights. Does this is too anything. Is that what I think it is? It is, okay, cool. I'm gonna put those on. That seems like it would be helpful to have on. And then we're gonna come down and a new thing I'm adding, mixture. We're gonna put it into auto lean while we taxi, because we don't need all an all rich mix to taxi. We entered our flight plan. We're going uh, from Nome. We're gonna start by heading to Uniform November Kilo. Nav aids are set. We've got the VOR tuned in. And we can also tune in the secondary VOR. And I'm just going to tune it to... We'll tune that one just directly to 116.9 so that we have... Um, we can kind of... We can tell what we're looking at here. So we've got them on both of them. I'm also going to throw this into V-Lock just because... Okay, so we're configured. Flight plan is configured. Just double check our engines, make sure everything is lining up, that oil temperature is still coming up. Cover is a little cold, but not bad. And just to double check, we're going to check our engine stress visualizer, and we're in the green, so that's good. And we're the only human at the airport, so I'm giving ourselves clearance to taxi. We're going to push back, and uh, just ever so slightly push back, and then we're going to rotate. Um, we're going to turn right. Taxi down this... Um, Text down this taxiway we're and then we're gonna backtrack up. Um, what I believe, and let me look at the chart, is runway two one. So the winds are two four zero for ten knots. So we're gonna go uh, take runway two one out there. We could also reasonably take two five. Um, that would work as well. So to wrap up, for taxi parking brake. Area's clear, and parking brake is off. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and begin our taxi. Yeah, put the reverser on, and just give it a little bit of reverse. Just a touch. And it came out of it. But that's okay, because that building is quite close to us. We're a little big for this spot. So now we're going to begin our taxi out. And I'm going to hold short of the runway before we start our backtrack and run the before takeoff checklist. So our run up was completed. Um, our temperatures and pressures look okay. I've got no warning lights. Our doors and windows are closed and locked. Yep. And flaps. We're going to go flaps 20. One, two, three. Cow flaps. Four degrees open. Boost pump says required, and we're not going to use boost pump today. Air conditioning, I feel great. Flight instruments are looking okay. Um, controls, we need to disengage the gust lock. And make sure that we have control inputs. Two... Looks like we did, so controls are all free. 
clear and then the correct sense we're gonna go mixture now to auto rich don't need to lean it out for taxi and our landing lights are going to be extended and on Let's see what that does neato okay So our engines are looking okay, well temperature and oil pressure. We have a little bit of yellow, but it's all right for now. And we are currently 80,000 pounds. So we are gonna be doing a dry takeoff today. Uh, so I'm gonna backtrack on out this uh, way, make sure there is no one coming, even though there shouldn't be. And we will taxi on out and get on our way. And today should be a treat. We're going to be flying over the heart of Alaska. And again, we did a lot of practice in the last couple episodes, um, especially with landing. Uh, so again, today, I just want to spend more time. There's a car on the runway. But we'll ignore him. Make sure. Okay. Uh, but so goals for today, we're going to be. I'm going to be paying more attention. I've been rewatching all of the tutorials, essentially, and just trying to figure out what power settings I'm going to be there. That's the one thing that um, I think the uh, using the AFE is good. But if you don't know what power level to use when, that can be problematic. And I just want to be more comfortable with that where we need to be when. Um, and then, yeah, just to also just, again, practicing planning a descent into Anchorage. I think that'll always, that'll help us out quite a bit. And it won't just be a straight-in um, approach, so we're going to have to loop around the airport a little bit to get to, I believe we're coming in on 2-5, is what we're planning for, so. We'll basically be entering from the north and then looping around to the south. I'm getting some lights. It's just oil pressure. As we back taxi back by the National, um, I believe this is National Guard ramp. And we will loop around. And get on our merry way. So brief in the takeoff. We are going to take off with a dry takeoff. Um, I'm going to look up here now. I don't have a good view for this. We're at 80, we're right about 80,000 pounds. Our V1 is going to be Looks like 83 knots. We're going to rotate at 101, so really what we've been saying, and they'll be climbing at about 130. And again, just real light, real light touch on the um, takeoff. After that, I think we're going to loop. We're going to turn left, come back around, and um, dial in the VOR. We're going to be departing outbound on the 095 radio. And this probably should be done before you get on the runway. But again, we're the only humans here. So we're going to be departing outbound 095 from the Gnome. The OR, we're going to travel 148 nautical miles. I'm also going to put this in stopwatch mode and get ready. All right. We're going to run. Try takeoff. Stabilized. Cal flaps. Cal flaps. Cal flaps set. Four. 
So they went to 30, and now we should end up around 52, I believe, 52, 53, the red line on the manifold pressure line gauge. And now we're at full power. Full power set. Releasing brake, and away we go. So we got airspeed alive, passing 40. And here's 80. And 100 knots, we're gonna rotate. Just keep it in there, smooth. And we're pitching for 130. So I'm gonna trim. Pitch for 140 now. Goes down just a touch. Still just trimming out. And we're getting a little fast now. So again, just bring it back. As they come off the power a little bit, it should help us. Meter power set. Climb power. City climb power. I should add a. Um, I need to add barometric pressure to my checklist. There's climb power. We'll let the nose come down until we're pitching for 165. And then we'll begin our maneuver. Climb power set. Time to take off checklist, please. We're going to begin a bank to the left. After takeoff checks complete. We'll do about a half rate turn. So we're going to fly just the shortest little um, bit inbound to the GNOME VOR. And then we'll pick up the outbound, and that'll be our, um, that'll be our deal for a while. You can see VOR2 just came in, so that's good. That means we're picking up the next VOR on our list as well. And we're climbing now through 3,000 feet. Okay, so this is the direction we're going to be going. I mean, I'm just going to split the difference here a little bit. because they will both they should both reference the same path. And we don't really need to go to the known VOR. V lock, is that gonna make this go away? That's on GPS. Um, so we are learning how to use this uh, particular instrument with the GPS. I actually um, have had more trouble with the GPS in this than um, than other things. Make double check. We've got the right VOR tuned in, 115.0. And I'm just looking on, I got Sky Vector up on the other monitor, and I'm just looking at uh, that to make sure, 115.0. And it should be off to our left. And the needles are actually, it looks like coming in a little bit, if I can see that. Just a touch. As they should, because this VOR, we should, um, I'm really not rushing to 
intercept the gnome portion of this because it's still pointing inbound, so it's still pointing at it. It should flip, and once that arrow is pointing behind us, we'll try and get on that path. Uh, but the other thing, the sanity check, is we should be following the coast out of gnome. And then basically we're crossing this body of water. I forgot what it's called. Uh, the Norton Sound we're crossing. I'm just going to bring it back so that I'm still kind of pointing at Uniform Gnome Arquila. And you can see we're two miles from the Gnome VOR, which means it's really two miles off our right side. And let's keep on climbing, make sure we have... Hmm. That was weird, I don't know if you noticed that. I'll tell you, some of my gauges were frozen there for a little bit. Not sure, we're climbing through 6,000. I'm shooting for 14,000 feet today. It's going to be the highest we've cruised at. Um, there are some pretty high mountains around Anchorage when we get there. Um, the rest of the route doesn't have a ton of terrain. But once we get to Anchorage, there's going to be some high mountains, and we're basically going through, I believe it's Simpsons Pass, between two mountain peaks that are going to be up at around 11,000, 12,000 feet. So the VFR sectional around our port is going to be, it's going to have a minimum altitude of 9,300, and we're just going to go up to 14,000 for, for fun. Passing 7,000 now, 7,200. Uh, and I haven't put the gyro pilot on yet, because, frankly, I'm just enjoying flying it. Should be getting up above this cloud layer. Now, if we pick up any ice, the icing panel is going to be over... Where are they? Are they here? Yeah, so our icing panel and controls are going to be here. Right above us, if we need them. We really shouldn't. Um, yeah, we're looking at negative 20 Celsius, so yeah, we shouldn't, but maybe, we'll see. That's 8,000 feet. And now you see the, the small white needle is now, um, we're actually kind of missing the VR. So the small white needle is coming in and flipped behind us. And now it's kind of lining up much better with um, our next VOR at UNK. So I'm going to come right, and we've got the GPS, um, or we've got our um, we've got our VOR needles alive, so that's good. We're just going to get on this track, and um, yeah, we'll get into the cruise. We are passing 9,000 feet. And I'm a little fast. I can come back a little bit on the nose. I mean, at this point, I'm really not even giving it very much stick input at all, too. I and mean, that's kind of the nice thing about this airplane. I'm really not giving it much. I'm really uh, controlling it with the trim more, more than anything else. So the VR is starting to come in. Let's level off. Or level out the pitch. And we're going to start our turn left now. And we're climbing out at 40 manifold pressure and 2400 RPM. So that is going to be kind of our standard rule of thumb for the climb. There's 10,000 feet. So 40 manifold pressure, which is this gauge right here. And then we've got looking at 2400 RPM. And that's giving us a BMEP of, it looks like, 180. We can take a closer look. It is now engines looking good. Everything's pointing in the uh, in the same directions as they should be. Um, and just keeping an eye out for some ice if we get ice. I'm gonna come back left. Try and 
and stay on the VOR. So, and you can see the distance now. We're counting 13 miles up from no. And eventually we're going to count down to... Should have started that when we started, but that's okay. So we'll be either counting up to 130 or counting down to zero. Once we find the, once we get the other VR, we're at 11,000. Looks like a break through the top of the clouds. We don't seem any worse for wear. Just another check. Engine stress visualizer. Oil temperature is a little low. Or high. It's yellow. And we're passing 12,000. Now, if I judge this right, we should be hitting the uh, we should be hitting a nice clear day morning when we get to uh, Anchorage. Sun should be up in again about two hours. That's twelve thousand six hundred. And I'm even pitching a little bit too far back, so we can bring it. We're a little too we're a little too fast, so bring it back up a little bit. Not terribly much. That's thirteen thousand. One thousand more. And that's going to be 13,500. Thirteen six. Thirteen seven. I'm just going to start bringing the nose down. Maintain that the rest of that climb down to maybe 500 feet per minute. And just start to gently level off. And that is 14,000 feet. So we are at cruising altitude. Uh, we're basically just going to let the speed pick up a little bit before we run the cruise checklist, get us into a cruise, and then we can configure for our um, then we can configure for cruise gyroplot's going to come on we're going to go autopilot disconnect on altitude hold on uh, we're tuned into the localizer so make sure everything's centered and we'll go into the localizer as well and it's coming left just a little bit to pick it up and fix itself Speed's coming up, we're at about 210 now. And we've finished the turn, so we'll just do a little bit of level flight before we jump into cruise. 210 now. Let's go ahead and run the cruise checklist, boys. Oops. Don't mind me. Uh, my view cockpit view translation. One of those buttons is accidentally double bound to um, something. I don't know what it is, but something that messes with the autopilot. Can 
we'll disconnect on. And we're gonna go to gyropod mode. Let's look in here, we are. Looks like about 90 miles out. And we are 33 miles from Gnome, so that's all kind of tracking. And just to be a little bit proactive, I'm going to tune in Nav 2 to be the McGarth VOR, which is 115.5. So 115.5. That way it's just ready, it's there, I kind of know what it is. Um, and I'm not scrambling once we're coming up on it. All right, so we are here over the... I just had it. It's exactly like it's spelled. We're now over the Unilockly VOR. And um, I've just been playing around with the GPS and the nav a little bit. Um, there isn't a huge difference, but we are going to go ahead and follow our procedure um, for changing over just for repetition. We're going to go into localizer mode. It should hold this heading while we tune in the next VOR. Now we'll notice here I have it set up in VLOC mode. That means that the GPS, this unit, is our NAV1 unit and it's feeding this um, instrument here. You can see it's lit up NAV right now. That means we have VLOC set up here. It's going off of these frequencies. Uh, if I hit the CDI button, just like in default aircraft or other aircraft, if I hit the CDI button and turn it into GPS, it's just going to follow this kind of almost virtual VR. It's going to try and put this green line here on that green arrow. So the thing about that is if you want to fly it, just fly it. It should follow that course in the GPS. Um, and you shouldn't have to tune in um, the uh, OBS knob here to make that happen. There's a slight deviation between the two courses. Uh, that's to be expected. But we're going to fly this one the old-fashioned way, and then I'm probably going to pop it onto the GPS and let it take us the rest of the way. But we're two miles out from the VR now, so I'm actually going to just bump this up to 96. And we're going to go ahead and tune in 115.5, the McGarth VOR. So that's already on 115.0, so we just need to bring it up to 115.5. And now we're in. And does this make sense? Do we have the VR? We do. It's pointing directly in front of us, which we know is the case. We're basically flying in a straight line today. So, um, so yeah, we're going to... We're 144 nautical miles out, but um, just till we're a little bit closer, I'm going to keep it on UNK just to, um, just to make sure we have a little bit... Um, just to make sure we keep it. Um, we could really go either way at this point. We're flying on a straight line, but I'm going to anchor to that one until we're at about 50 miles, 60 miles, 70 miles, and then probably swap over to the next VR. So that's set up, and we're going to go ahead and knock it into localizer mode. We've passed. We're now counting up from from zero to we're now at four miles from that VR. And again, we're going to I'm going to look at 70, or I might pop on the GPS, and so I can um, take care of some other stuff and you know, still keep it on course. So yeah, just some experimentation with the GPS system as well. Uh, that's kind of what's driving it. So when you have this GPS in, it plugged into the aircraft, it is feeding this instrument here, whether it's in GPS or nav mode. All right, so we will cruise for a little bit longer now over the heart of Alaska. And um, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys when we're planning our descent into Anchorage.
All right, everybody, we are back, and we are now about 80 miles from Big Lake. Now, our descent math of 500 nautical miles per thousand feet, we have to descend around 11,000 feet, uh, so we should be descending for about 55 nautical miles. Add on to that about 20 nautical miles to slow down, and we should be looking at descending around um, 70 around 70 nautical miles away from Big Lake. Now, Big Lake, we have another 20 miles to get to Anchorage, which we can also use to bleed off any speed we may have. Uh, now, in the cruise, the only other thing that we did was we went ahead and switched these um, fuel tanks into the alt tanks. Um, if you look up here, we are um, we added a little fuel to the alternate tanks. Um, and generally, what we're going to want to do is take off using the main tanks, Sorry, I'm bouncing around. And then switch over to the alternate tanks for the cruise. Burn that down, and once we burn down the alternate tanks, go back to the main tanks. It's very simple to change it around. You just knock all these switches into the alternate position. Now we're going to go back to main tanks, I think, for once we get uh, in range and ready for the landing. But that's the only thing that, the other thing that has um, kind of happened so far. So we are getting ready. We've got about seven miles to 70 uh, nautical miles from Big Lake. And because we're a little high, we can start thinking about descent. We're gonna start our descent just and stay in climb and cruise power and begin our descent. And then once we are um, kind of established, in the, we'll allow us the uh, AFE to go into the descent checklist. A little bumpy up here as so we cross the mountains. Those are some big mountains over there. And over there. Um, but Anchorage should be off to our nose and to our right. So we're coming up 75 nautical miles. We're a little high, so I'm actually going to go ahead and begin the out begin the descent now. And just I'm going to start adding some glide wheel. I'm not going crazy, not just yet. So keep just giving it another knock or two, bringing it down. You know, we're shooting for about a thousand feet per minute. And so when we start to see this go down to about 20, 25, and we should be getting near to um, getting set at 3,000 feet. Now once we get down to 3,000 feet, we're going to be shooting the ILS for runway 15, which basically we're going to come off Bear Lake, turn right heading 181, and then we're going to travel that way for 12.3 miles. At 12.3 miles, we should be intercepting the localizer at Anchorage at runway 15. So we want to be fully configured for landing. Flaps 30, gear down, everything, when we hit that. So once we're 12 miles from this VOR. So that's why it's going to be important for us to get down, get slowed down, get situated as we um, hit Bear Lake. Because once we hit Bear Lake, we're going to be trying to get into our landing configuration. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and continue our descent into Anchorage, and I will check back with you when we get a little bit closer to Big Lake. All right, so we're now descending through 4,000, 4, 000, 4 3,000 feet. We check we're about 25 miles out of Big Lake, so that's about right. I'm gonna come start bringing it back a little bit, bring the nose up, start bleeding off speed. So 25 miles from Big Lake, and then we're gonna be making our right turn, but we'll start leveling off here at 3,000 feet. Another thing while we're doing this, we can tune in the localizer, which is gonna be on 111. 0.75, I believe, and we'll do this over here too. 1.75, and check altitude. We're 3,500. Just pay 
patience as it comes in. And we're actually pretty bang on 20 miles from Big Lake. So we're gonna throw altitude control on. The aircraft's gonna level off. And we'll start losing some of the speed. Anchorage is going to be off to our right. We should be pretty much doing a straight in approach for um, when five will obviously are following the ILS, but um, we shouldn't have to do a ton of maneuvering around the airport. We're really just going to turn right and then intercept the glide slope. So we're now down to 200 knots. Sixteen miles. Passing 190 now. Go ahead and get the in-range check started so they can start running through their flows. We're about 10 miles from Big Lake. And we're looking at 189. Go ahead and knock this off. And just take control of the throttles, and I'm just going to bring the BME back just a touch. Because I don't love our descent. And then once we're below 174, we can start to um, put in more flaps. We're 8.5 miles from Big Lake. And it looks like we're down at 185. Still just very ever so slowly losing speed. Now at Big Lake, we're going to make a right turn, roughly heading 181. If we overshoot, we want to overshoot to the right. That'll give us more space to work on the ILS. So if we um, go greater than 181, for whatever reason, we will have more room, room more room to work with. miles we're at 180 179 looks like and then once we get that we're gonna go flaps 20 
Now I'm going to go over to Gyropilot, take it out of localizer mode so it's not so it's not on the GPS anymore. I got to fix that keybind. Take that off. Gyropilot back on. Back on. And that's three miles. So we'll just kind of gently start thinking about coming over. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go into VLOC and we're going to platoon in the ILS here. And we've got nav VLOC on the um, HSI, so that's good. And we're coming right to about 181. Now, we do want to keep an eye on the Big Lake VOR. Because this is what we're going to be um, determining. It should be 12 miles from the Big Lake VOR and 13 from the ILS. So we can just kind of swap between those. This is still in our nav too. And we're going to come right to 181, just past the needle here. And I believe that's also going to get us into a position where we can go flaps 20. And I want altitude hold on. But we'll actually um, bring it back down just a touch back to 3,000. And now, we want to be fully configured when this number says uh, 12. I think it's 12.3. But we'll sh we'll, we'll, I'd take 12. We're passing 1.8 now. I'm going to level off. And again, if we overshoot, that's okay. I'd rather overshoot it than undershoot it. about probably see the airport off our nose yep so that is Anchorage and I lost my BMEP because I went to external view so we're just gonna keep this at around 80 for now Good on speed, so no real worries there. Just to remind you what the approach plate looks like. Coming in on Big Lake. Heading 181, we're really going to be further out to the north, but that's okay. And when this, um, when we get 12 miles from Big Lake, we will be expecting the needles to start coming in. So we'll be banking left to intercept the localizer. And at 6.7 miles out, I'm going to go ahead and let the guys run the before landing checklist. Set 
So at this point, we're real slow. We're at 120 knots, just puttering along. And we are fully configured for landing. And the needles are starting to come in now, so we're going to begin a left turn. And we can see the runway right there. We're now visual to the runway. So we'll come back and just try and do our best to get established horizontally. And now I'm going to swap back over. Man, overshoot. Overshoot. Didn't hit the button right. Okay, so now we're going to swap back over. Um, to this one, um, to Nav 1, to see where we're at here. Um, at 13 miles from the uh, runway, we should be. Let's begin our descent from 3,000 feet. I'm going to give it a little bit more power, just so we don't lose all airspeed. Fully configured, because we're not descending yet. I'm actually going to put it in a localizer mode. And it's going to... figure it out. Fifteen miles, we're holding 3,000 feet. The glide slope should be coming in really any moment now. Now we see the glide slope slowly starting to come in. And I'm going to go ahead and take the con. Thank you, I know. I am aware. And let's just get it all trimmed out and happy. We're still holding 3,000 feet. Um, I'm just trying to get the glide slope nice and set. I'm going to go flaps 30, and then flaps 40 here. I'm going to bring the power back to 70 BMEP. There it is. Okay, so we are fully configured for landing. We're a little behind the glide slope, so I'm going to give it a little more flat. And uh, if my count's right, that should take us flat 50. It is. Now we are a little bit off on the right to left, so let's come on over. There may be a bit of a crosswind here. And there's the glide slope coming in now. If we like where we are, I'm going to pull it back to flaps 40. just gently, we're still off to the right a little bit, we're still a bit high. So I'm actually going to knock it back into flaps 50. Try and catch up with the glide slip a little bit. And we're getting a little fast. I'm just going to bring it back down to like 65 BMP. Now lately I've been having issues floating kind of on this last bit. So it'll be kind of nicely roughed in and then we'll get real high all of a sudden. 
So that's something I'm trying to avoid on this run. Light slope's pretty bang on. We're drifting a little left. And here I thought about giving the um, approach mode a shot. But it's kind of fun to... It's kind of more fun to hand fly it. And now we're below the glide slope, so let's bring the flaps up. We'll go flaps 30. And back to flaps 40. And back to flaps 50. We're getting a little high now. Still off to the left a little bit, so let's come right. We're still high. And I've got three white, one red. Matches up to the what we're seeing on the HSI. All right, we're going to get our view configured. Zoom out a little bit, and that's good. Okay. So we're now still high, three white, one red. Still off to the left, just a touch. Just a hair. We're gonna cover back just a touch. All right, and there's the glide slope. We got two white, two red. demonstration of a crosswind landing than I thought. Alright, here we go. Looking okay. Just keep it going down. Let's give them beans. Let's make this taxiway. Come on. Nice. All right. So, welcome to Anchorage, everybody. That was a good approach. Um, yeah, I seem to still have trouble being fully configured, flaps 50 and everything, but still finding myself a bit high. So I'm gonna have to do some more reading and some more troubleshooting on that. Uh, because that seems like a consistent trend that I'm seeing. I feel like I'm higher than I should be and I just can't keep up with the glide slope. But I came back on the power a little bit, back to 65 and then even 60 there, and it felt a lot better. So it may just be a kind of power, a more of a nuance to what power setting we should be at. But either way, a lot of fun. And the one thing about this airplane that's kind of oddly satisfying is because it's so, um, because it's such a, uh, success is so much about being in the right place at the right time, it's really fun to fly published approaches and procedures in a way that it's really not even in jetliners or any plane. Because usually my eyes glaze over a little bit when you start talking about, um, you know, these VR to VR approaches and things. But in the DC-6, you really lean on that stuff. Um, in some like CRJ or an A320, you really don't I don't know, I don't know that I'd care that I'm 12 miles from the airport at this stage. 
necessarily, but in the DC six I do, and that's really kind of that's kind of fun. I um, yeah, I really like that about it. It makes you appreciate. Um, it makes you appreciate the charts. We're just gonna pull off here. I don't know if this is actually parking or not. But we're a special delivery. All right, we'll put the parking brakes on. They'll tell us to move, and we'll run after landing. Welcome to Anchorage, everybody. So that was a, another just quick flight. We did some cold and dark setup. We ran through the before um, takeoff procedures, um, and then we practiced the landings Welcome again. Thanks, guys. Let's go to parking. Oh, and we did some fuel management, too. So, uh, a lot of fun stuff today. Uh, I think one of the next steps is going to be shooting an ILS approach with the um, with the gyro pilot. So, we'll see if we head back out to Gnome. We probably will at some point. But, yeah. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the channel, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Likes, comment, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. Always helps. Um... It always helps these kinds of things. So really appreciate everybody for sticking with us in this um, series. I hope it's helpful to you. I hope you're learning something. And um, yeah, that's it for VFR today. Take it easy, everybody.